Let me start off by saying <clears throat> that uh, I'm not in the business of questioning David Pyatt's uh, history or experience, but just in case Jamie Dimon's listening, I I've learned a lot from uh, the financial service industry management. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to quickly go through a quick update on the capital markets, where we're at, where we're at from an equity perspective and an M&A perspective. Um, <clears throat> First, uh, let me start off with just a little bit of historical context. Uh, you know, healthcare sector has been exceptional, quite frankly, uh, since 2011. It's ranked as number one or number two uh, of subsectors in the S&P 500 since 2011, and really peaking, as many of you know, um, directly, uh, with a performance in 2013 and 14, where uh, we were at almost 40 percent uh, year-over-year returns in the healthcare sector in 2013. <clears throat> Obviously, we also all have lived and know that uh, starting really in August of 2015 through the third quarter uh, of 2016 has been a bit of a different story with the pullback in healthcare. And what you see on the left-hand side of this slide is that the, uh, the industry has actually lagged the broader uh, rebound, especially that's happened post-Brexit. Post um, and when you peel back that onion a little bit on the right-hand side of the page, what you see is that that's largely been uh, led by biotech, which is held back a bit more and in the, in the curve down and pullback was a bit more steep. Medtech on the, the right-hand side you see in green has actually done quite well. And we'll again dive into that in a little bit more detail because not all of the participants in the medtech industry have felt that appreciation in the same way. Whenever you have uh, market conditions like we experienced in the fourth quarter of last year and going into this year, it tends to also then lead to fund uh, outflows. And I, I highlight this because it has a, a broader implication for, for market dynamics in terms of new issuance. But this peaked in the first quarter uh, of, of last year where we saw almost $13 billion uh, of outflows. But in the first half of last year within healthcare funds, we actually saw almost $25 billion of, of, of fund outflows. And as a result, uh, public equity offerings slowed significantly since peaking in 2015. Um, if you look at, at, at the far right-hand side, what you see is we did almost $97 billion worth of healthcare equity issuance in the U.S. alone in 2015. Um, that's particularly astounding when you actually think about that that happened largely in January through July, right? But so far this year, we've done uh, a little over $20 billion through the third quarter. Uh, another thing to note on this page is that if you see over the last several years, the trend has been more towards about that 30% of that overall uh, volume being in, in new issuance from uh, initial public offerings. But what we saw in 15 and 16 is continued sponsorship of existing public companies, but in increasingly difficult conditions for actually getting out into the public market. And that's why you see the dip down to about 15% of the volume. Within the biotech industry, you actually have seen a, a pretty substantial revaluing um, of, of, of the uh, IPOs. When you compare the January through August 2015 period versus September 2015 through August 2016. And what you've seen is that for the market caps, post-money valuations at IPO, the valuation for biotechs is down about $100 million. And what you see from the amount of proceeds raised is they've gone from about $117 million in, in an IPO to, to 75. And from a valuation step up, a, a very important metric, as many of you know, when we're thinking about setting the price for IPOs in the biotech industry, it's gone from about 1.8 times to 1.0. But the good news is, is that uh, after that sustained law, we did see a pickup in, in the third quarter and heading into October. Obviously, the last couple of days of market performance has, has been a bit different, but we have seen in, in this chart, you're looking at the price performance and outcomes of IPOs, uh, whether they came out in the range, which is yellow, above, which is green, or below, which is red. Clearly, you saw the performance in the fourth quarter of 2015, where 60% of the deals either uh, priced below or didn't price at all. Um, it, that's improved substantially where we've gotten some stability in the third quarter and 70% of the deals were happening within the range. <clears throat> but I want to put that pullback in context quickly for biotech, right? Over the last 20 years, biotech was up 2,740%, the index, right? From 20 years ago to the peak. So even with the pullback that we experienced in the, in the fourth quarter and first quarter this year, it's still up 2,000% relative to the S&P 500 at 122. So you can understand why a lot of investors, many of which are in the room, still uh, look very closely and follow the asset class and are looking forward to, to the market uh, returning for those IPOs. 
And from a med tech perspective as well, it's, it, it's been a, a long period of outperformance. Um, it hasn't treated both the same, where valuation for the larger and mid-cap stories have actually expanded. Uh, some of the emerging companies, what you see on the far right is a, a bit of a pullback there in the valuation. Quickly, on the, IP, on the ophthalmic side, we've seen uh, good performance led by Glaucos at almost doubling since their IPO. Um, the IPO activity has mirrored the overall markets where we saw a significant number of IPOs in 2012, 13, 14, and then pulled back in 16. And from an M&A standpoint, we, we know that the market has continued to remain fairly strong, a little bit of a pullback in 2016 year to date, but led in this industry by several notable deals, including what we talked about with AMO and J&J, &J, and then several of the, the mixed transactions. Thank you. Thank you.